Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to Pythagoras' theorem. So we're going to start off with three triangles, which I'm sure you can see that they're all slightly different. Um, and I'll point out just now that they're not drawn to scale. Okay. Um, now, if we were in class just now, we would be working on page two of your work booklet on Pythagoras' theorem. But I know that not a lot of you will have printers at home to print that out. So that's why I'm just going to do the same thing through this video that you would have been doing. So if we look at each of these triangles separately and we just examine the lengths of their sides. Now you would be measuring these but I'm just going to tell you what the lengths are just now. So if we look at triangle one, our longest side is five units. We've got a side which measures four units and our last length is three units. If we look at triangle two now, we can see our measurements there are 13, 12 and five units. And for triangle three, our measurements are 17, 15 and eight. So I've recorded all of that in a wee table just now and I want to have a look at any relationships which exist between these lengths in each of these triangles. So when we're looking for a relationship in maths, we tend to start by using arithmetic. So add and subtract and multiplying and dividing. So let, let's try that for sides one and two and see if there's a relationship between those two sides and the longest side of each of these triangles. So if I go back to triangle one and I add sides one and two together, I'm sure you'll all agree that I'm going to get seven. If I subtract them, I get one. Multiplying them, I get 12. And dividing them, four divided by three is four thirds, or one and a third, or 1.3 recurring. Right, so I'm not seeing anything there just yet, but let's try triangle two. So if we add the two shorter sides together, get 17, subtracting gives us seven, multiplying gives us 60, dividing gives us 2.4. Still not really seeing anything, but we'll look at triangle three anyway. So 23 for adding, seven for subtracting, 120 for multiplying, and 1.875 for dividing. Now with the exception of a few sevens up here and I'm sure you'll agree folks that there isn't much relationship here. We can't really take anything from this. So I wonder if we if we square each of the sides what would happen? So for triangle one we'll get five, four and three. So squaring those would give us 25, 16 and nine. For triangle two, when we square the lengths of the sides, we would get 169, 144 and 25. And triangle three, we're going to get 289, 225 and 64. Right, maybe if we rewind a bit then as well and go and add, subtract, multiply and divide the squares, we might find the relationship. So just something to try. So for the first one, if we add the squares of the two shorter sides, we're going to get 25. If we subtract them, we're getting 7. Multiplying gives us 144 and dividing gives us 1.7 recurring. It's 1 and 7 ninths. For triangle 2, Adding the squares of the two shorter sides together gives us 169. Subtracting, multiplying, dividing. And for triangle three, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Now, we might have had a wee bit more success here in trying to find some sort of relationship and hopefully you've noticed already that the longest side squared is the same as 
side 1 squared plus side 2 squared. Now, if we look at the longest side in each of these triangles, you might notice that it's opposite a right angle. So you might have assumed at the beginning, folks, that these were right angle triangles. But I hadn't told you that yet. Okay, but I'm now going to tell you that these are right angle triangles. And if we look at the longest sides, those are all opposite the right angles. So that's just something interesting to note as we move forward. So let's examine a right angle triangle then. What we've found is the longest side is opposite the right angle. Now the longest side in a right angle triangle has a special name and that is the hypotenuse. And sometimes we write H for short. Now we've discovered this. We know that the hypotenuse squared is equal to side 1 squared we'll call it A, plus side 2 squared, we'll call that B. And the order of A and B at the moment don't matter. We could have A here and B here. It doesn't matter as long as H is the longest side. That's the most important bit. So we've got hypotenuse squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And that, folks, is Pythagoras' theorem. So you might have heard of Pythagoras before. He lived from 560 BC until 480 BC. He was a Greek philosopher and a religious leader, and he was responsible for many important developments in maths, astronomy and music. And his most famous discovery is known as Pythagoras' theorem, which is what we have just learned about. So, we're at the end of the lesson today, folks, but what I would do just now is pause this video and this slide here on Pythagoras' theorem, I would copy all of that down into your notes jotter, making sure that you've labelled the triangle correctly and you've written down the theorem as well, the h squared equals a squared plus b squared. And tomorrow we'll come back and we'll learn how to use this formula.